One of the things that we are discovering about people who are active in philanthropy is um, how that philanthropy turns on interesting things like gender, like region, mm. uh, like religious background. W were you, did you ever attend a religious school? I did not, but I grew up in a very religious, um, you know, Catholic family um, with very devout parents. Not extreme in any way, but very, you know, very steadily devout, went to church every Sunday. And it's interesting that you mentioned that because one of the causes I support came out of my church experience. Which one? Um, Covenant House. Mm -hmm. So, Cove do you guys know Covenant House? Um, the original f uh, founder of Covenant House came to my church when I was 13 years old and was the guest person to give a sermon and talked about Covenant House, which is at the time was just in New York, which is a place where um, runaway children could come and be taken in and sometimes reconnect with their families and sometimes not, but taken in and cared for and clothed. And now they do job training and all kinds of things. Um, and they're in many cities. And I was 13 years old. This made such an impression on me. I started giving money when I was 13 mm -hmm. to this cause. And that is one of the ones that I have kept as a defined cause that I, you know, I try to support in some significant way. Um, Actually, so I don't know how that ties in. I mean, it w obviously there was a, there was a religious component to that. There was a, you know, a, a feeling of helping people less fortunate than myself and, and understanding that that was part of what I was supposed to do. But it was, even now I can almost remember the sort of emotional connection that made me say that's, you know, I want to do something about that. Now Covenant House, I use this by way of explaining how you've stayed connected. <coughs> now Covenant House has had a rocky road for a little bit. Yes. As Yale has had and any, any organization goes through. How did you, and why did you stay with them, or stay with Yale or any, through the hard times? Why do you do that? Well, because I think in that particular instance, um, the, the, the mission of the organization and the work of the organization um, was clear, the mission was clear and important, and the work of the organization was going to go on in spite of the difficulties that they had with the leadership. Mm -hmm. They were going to get the right new leaders, and they did, in fact, get the right new leaders to continue this mission. Um, I suppose if I were there in the, inside the walls of that organization at the time, I might have wondered whether it was going to survive. But as an outsider, I thought it's almost more important for me to continue to support them because they probably will have less support because of the, you know, the things that go on. And, and with, with Yale as well, with Yale, I actually don't see, I haven't, been so involved in a time when I thought that there was a problem. Mm -hmm. You know, there have been lots of issues that have come out, you know, publicly about things that Yale gets criticized for, but I've been, in a way, on the inside. You know, I know the people in the administration and I can see what's going on and how they react as people to some of the things that go on and I see the good faith and what I feel is a real commitment to the right values. Okay. So probably part of the effect of my being able to be involved at this level and, and give this time and talent is that I also am able to see, you know, it's almost like politics, right? Yeah. You see that you, you can spend enough time to figure out what's really going on and examine the nuances and not react to a superficiality about a situation. Um, but I, I, so I think it, it, it's important, really in both cases, focusing on what's really happening and what the mission is and what you want to help them accomplish.